Hey guys, Foxy Pop here, and today we're going to be doing another episode of, guess what, Dream Daddy! Um, I haven't played this game in so, so long. If you can hear, like, a noise, like a fan or something, sorry, that's something I can't control. It's, like, the weird thing from the basement. Anyway, we're going to be talking to this fellow, Craig, and I don't remember the story elements at all, so that's just going to be great. <laughs> I turn around and am greeted by a familiar face jogging up to us. Also, that baby, that baby's adorable. Craig? Bro. Bro. Holy, wow. Haven't seen Craig in forever. I guess I knew this guy. It's been too long, dude. Also, I forgot I looked like this completely. Do not remember looking like that. But anyway... <laughs> yeah, wow, you look great! Haha, <laughs> yeah, I cleaned up my act, so I guess he wasn't the best. Oh, you meant- you- you meant his body mass, okay. Cleaned up his act? Are you kidding me? He's ripped. Amanda, this is my friend Craig. We went to college together. We were roommates for a while, too. Amanda, dude, you probably don't remember me, but you're so big now. Hello, and hello, cute baby. Aw, oh, thank you. The last time I saw you, I think you were about her size. This is River. Say hi, River. Oh! I love her so much. She's so cute. He picks up her teeny wrist and waves it around. River gurgles happily. God, I'm a sucker for a baby. Nah, dude, River's my kid. Man, it has been a long time. Feels like one minute we're rolling up to exams with bad hangovers and the next we're both fathers. Where have you been, man? I was working out in California and just relocated the business back to Maple Bay. No kidding! Amanda and I just moved to the side of town. How's Smashly doing? Smash? What the hell was that? <laughs> I mean Ashley. Ashley is her name. <laughs> She actually still goes by Smashly, and uh, we got divorced last year. Yikes. Oh, dude, I'm so sorry. It's old news. We take turns taking care of River and the twins. It's all co- co-parenting. Copendic. Copendant. Jeez. Twins, you have three kids? Ain't life something, bro, right? Kegstan Craig is a father of three! Kegstan Craig? Oh, haha. <laughs> Yeah, it was my old college nickname. He got it because he did a lot of keg stands. Is that that thing when you do a headstand on a keg and then drink from the keg? Right. He was very good at it. Ah, bro, I hate to be that guy, but I'm in the middle of my daily jog. And I really gotta keep up my heart rate brought River along for, you know, resistance training. Oh. Okay. You dog- you, do you jog daily? I jog yearly. On J January 1st, when I promise myself that I'm going to jog daily for the rest of the year, we give up after 30 minutes and just walk home. Well, it's never too late to get back into it, dude. You should join me sometime. <laughs> I don't know. Come on. It'd be fun. We could grab breakfast afterwards, catch up. We could do a bro brunch like the good old days. Alright, sure. Sounds great. Great. Let's get that going soon. I better get moving. Good to see you guys. Greg gives a little wave, puts his earbuds back in, and jogs off. Can't believe Greg is ripped and has kids. I'm re reeling. Why is that? The Craig I knew is not fit to be responsible for any living thing, including and especially himself. One time I watched him drink an entire jar, jar of mar- Oh my god. Of marinara sauce for dinner. <laughs> <sighs> Amanda, he opened a new jar of marinara sauce and then he drank it like it was a thing that normal people do. It was unholy and then I asked him what the hell he was doing and he said, and I quote, it's basically a smoothie, bro. I mean, technically he's not wrong. He jogs. He was jogging. He's like a totally different person. Anyway, we better get home. I have plenty of time to reflect on how old I feel later. Oof. 
Amanda and I flop down on the couch. Amanda has to shove some empty boxes out of the way before she can sit. Too bad we're gonna be putting my stuff right back into these boxes in a few months. No, don't say that. Aw, oh, Dad, it's gonna be okay. I'll be fine. I know, I know. It's just... You're my little girl. It's gonna be weird not having you around. I'll come visit and I'll text you every day. And I'll take lots of pictures. I mean, obviously, I'm a photographer major. You promise? Of course. Are you gonna be okay by your lonesome? Oh, come on. I'll be fine. I get a, I'll get a dog or something. A dog? Forget, for, for, forget art school. I'll stay for the dog. Good job, girl. Bribe her with a dog. Is that what it's gonna take? Medium-sized dog, handkerchief around the neck. I get to name it. That's what it'll cost for me to give up on my dreams. I'm a simple- I'm a woman of simple wants and needs. I can't talk today. Jeez. Well, a dog is a lot cheaper than college. Amanda laughs. Suddenly, a pile of envelopes slides through the mail slot. Speaking of college... Amanda darts over to the envelopes and shuffles through them. She pulls out one and throws the rest back on the floor. This is from McGuan College of Art and Design. Open it! But I'm scared. It's just an envelope. Yeah, it's just like my entire future. Not a big deal. She takes a deep breath and rips the letter open with her teeth. We have a letter opener, but okay. I hold my breath while Amanda's eyes dart back and forth scanning the letter. What does it say? Uh... The admission committee has reviewed your application, blah blah blah. Um, we... Her face drops. Oh no... Regret to inform you that we are unable to offer you admission to McQuan College of Art and Design. Amanda throws the letter on the coffee table. Oh, sweetie. It's okay, I kind of saw it coming. I knew I shouldn't have put that experimental stuff in my portfolio. Their admissions officer told me they just wanted to see portraits or whatever. I pull Amanda in for a big hug. You're an amazing photographer. I know how much work you put into your portfolio. Some other school is going to want to snatch you up for sure. Yeah, I know. It's fine. Are you actually fine, or are you just saying that? Mm -hmm. I'm fine, really. Her face says the opposite, but I probably shouldn't push her on this. Oh, and before I forget, MR and Emma P are sleeping over tonight. Aww. So... You need me out of the way because I'm painfully uncool. I would choose more delicate phrasing, but yes. Well, I'll have you know that I conveniently already have plans for tonight, so you'll have the new place to yourself. Yeah? What are your plans? Quick, think of plans. Uh, 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 I'm going clubbing. <laughs> oh, that would be the biggest lie for me. I have not, I've never gone clubbing before. I'm gonna put on a nice outfit and go tear it up on the dance floor. All the hottest dance moves. The lawnmower, the sprinkler, the running man. You know, the one all the kids these days are doing. <laughs> All right, but I'm not gonna come pick you up if you pull anything this time. Not again. I'm just kidding. I'm actually going to go out and watch. I'm not watching the game. Go to bed. I'm wiped. Have fun with the Emmas. We'll try to keep it down. I know you're not going to, but I appreciate you saying that. And don't forget that you have the meeting with my English teacher tomorrow. All right, Mr. Vega. Yep, totally remembered. I'll be there. Awesome night, Pops. Oh, that's sweet. I forgot how much this game- This game has so much character. I wake up to a text from an unknown number. Rise and shine. Early birds still want to work out. This is Craig, by the way. Holy crap, it's 6 a.m.? Who does 6 a.m. anymore without really- Dear goodness, I can't speak, guys. I'm so sorry. I'm terrible with text-based games. Without realizing it, I drift back to sleep. Whoops, must have winked back out. I checked my phone again. Hey bud, still want to get your swole on? I'm ready to tear up the track. Hit me up. God, the last thing I want to do right now is work out. But it is Craig. I do want to catch up. Go to the gym with your friend Craig. 
Hey, my man, I need a few minutes to wake up, but let's meet in 20. After a few seconds, another text comes in. Sure thing, meet me at the gym. I stretch and my bones creak. I'm gonna stop falling asleep on the couch. I throw off my blanket and hey, wait, I don't remember falling asleep with a blanket. Amanda must have tucked me in after I fell asleep. Bless that child. I reluctantly brush my teeth, throw on my only clothes I own that are even kind of gym appropriate, and head out. The neighborhood is quiet and serene. This early in the morning, birds chirp and the grass is still wet with dew. Surprisingly, the gym is pretty crowded. I spot Greg standing out front, stretching, of course. He spots me and waves enthusiastically. My first language is English, I swear. Hey bro, good morning. Hey, good to see you, man. I'm definitely not as pumped up as he is. Maybe I should have had some coffee before I left. You ready to kick some butt? Hey, help! With your help, I am. Cause I need it. <laughs> I get the feeling this is gonna be less of me kicking butt and more the gym kicking my butt. But I can handle it with you here. Dude, bro, that means a lot. Hey. I just thanked you. I don't know what else I was you wanted me to do. We head into the gym and I'm immediately intimidated. All of these people look like they could break me in half and it seems like Craig is friends with all of them? He high fives and finger guns all of the cool jocks in the room. They look like they could and would steal my lunch money and spend it on protein, nice. protein shakes. Oh no. Come on, bud, let's warm up. We head over to the treadmills and start walking. Okay, I can walk. Walking is good. This is decent pace to be walking. So I know we are on treadmills. Yes. And those over there are ellipticals. Very good. What is all the other stuff? <laughs> Craig laughs. They might look a little scary, but I guarantee that's all of them serve a specific purpose for building muscle mass. I watch as a dude in muscle T flexes a muscle I didn't know existed on a machine I think was once used to progress grain into flour. What is that? Why is that guy doing that to himself? That's a good question, bro. What do you think he's doing? Training to crush people's skull with his thighs. Using a medieval torture device. Praying to some sort of pain god. <laughs> uh... I'm gonna say, I like this one the best. He's he's trying to make his thighs so strong that he could crush people's skulls with them. Yeah, that's pretty much the only reason I work out. Did you see that? I saw that vegetable go out of him. Mm hmm I know what you did, game. Oh no, Craig is turning up the speed. I better do the same. How, uh, how long have you been doing the buffs thing? Couple years. And what do you do when you're not dadding or working or buffing? Oh, I coach my twin softball team. That's cute. That still counts as both dadding and buffing. Ah, uh, I keep busy. What do you do for fun? I love learning. I try to live my life as close to Jimmy Buffet's song as possible. <laughs> Check out my hot bot! <laughs> um, I don't know whose song this is. I feel- I would feel bad for- I love learning. I try to educate myself about the world around me. I'm like a sponge for knowledge, soaking up all the intellectual content. You know, history, paranormal, world- world- wilderness, survival, uh, aliens, mostly thing- those things. So you watch the History Channel too, huh? Yes. <laughs> We're jogging now. Oh god, we're jogging now. I look over to Craig who hasn't even broken a sweat. How is he doing this so effortlessly? I'm dying. I can feel my life force draining through every orifice of my body. Hey, remember when my fish died in college? Huff. No. I don't like this story. <laughs> oh my god, is he really bumping up the speed again? I guess I better do it too. Oh, this is fast. This is very fast. And we were at the party and you vowed to make me feel better. You tell me to create a distraction. So of course I do a sick keg stand and get everyone cheering. And then I try to steal a fish from a fish tank at the party with my bare hands like an idiot. Dang. And then you drop the fish and it's flopping around and you panic. So you run up to my post keg stand with a dying dirty fish in your hands. 
that you scooped off the floor and you're yelling at me that we have to leave. Oh my god. <laughs> so you're running out of a frat party with a fish and trying to give it a mouth to mouth reinstate. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Reinstation. And we get him home and get him in a bowl of water, but the prognosis. Prognosis is grim. Oh my god. And the next day he's alive and well. Jesus. That's crazy. They never did catch the great fish thieves of Grand Rich U. And they never will. I shoot off the end of the treadmill and crash into the wall. Jesus, that hurts. Dude, bro, are you okay? Craig offers me a hand and looks over for injuries. I'm fantastic. I manage to stand up and rub my back. Doesn't hurt now, and I'm sure it will later. You don't have to push yourself like that. Always know your limits. Well, I think I might call our gym adventure here. You sure? Yeah. Oh. All right, well, here, I bought you this. Craig hands me a shaker bottle full of thick green liquid. I stare at it with mu must be apparent distaste. It's a protein shake, bro. Oh, thank you. He wants me to drink it. Oh boy, here goes. I take a small sip. It's actually delicious. Wow, that this is really hey. good. Good for you. It's my special re recipe. I'm pretty proud of it. Hey. Let me know if you ever want to work out, maybe. Maybe we can try running around the neighborhood if treadmills aren't your speed. No pun intended, bro. Good one, Will. I'm gonna go put some ice on this. Everything. I'll see you around. Yeah. That was good friending. Yeah, that's the word. I leave the gym feeling ashamed. Craig used to order delivery from the pizza place across the street from our dorm and now he can run circles around me. Literally, man, I really gotta work on this dad bod. I get home and lie down on the couch. It hurts to move. Oh god, I'm so old. Oh no, I must have fallen asleep. What time is it? Shoot, it's 3.55. I'm supposed to be at Amanda's school in five minutes. I frantically put on some clean clothes, apply a generous amount of deodorant, and run out of the door. Run, do it, you're okay, you can do it. I arrive at Amanda's school and check in at the front desk. They give me a bright orange visitor sticker. Didn't read the rest of that. I'm barely awake and feel pretty haggard, but hopefully nobody will notice. People will notice. I check my watch and am relieved to see that I am only two minutes late. Wait, was it room 103 or... Oh no, wait. I spot a youth standing at his locker and approach him for help. Excuse, excuse me, do you know where Mr. Vega classroom is? Oh. This is a youth, alright. The youth turns around and looks me up and down with heavily lined eyes. <sighs> Come on, kid, I'm late for a meeting. Mr. Who? Mr. Vega? I don't know. Have you tried the exit? Okay, wise guy, are you gonna help me or not? Fine, up those stairs and to the left. Can't miss him. I head up the stairs and walk around, unable to find Mr. Vega's class anywhere. After a couple minutes of searching, I head back downstairs. That punk youth sent me on a wild goose chase. I get back to where that low-rent Gerald Way is standing, fully ready to give him a piece of my mind, when suddenly a head pops out of the classroom next to his locker. Oh. Lucien, don't you have a third period to get to? Fine, Mr. Vega. Mm -hmm. Wow. Now I'm officially ten minutes late. I glare at him and he walks away. We're not cool. Mm -hmm. You must be Foxy Pop. This period's almost over. Would you mind waiting in the back? Oh. Mr. Vega leads me in and I take a seat in one of the comically small students' desks in the back. I might get stuck in this. Oh. Alright, where were we? Now who, who can tell me? About the unreliability of the narrator and J.D. Staler catcher in the mm -hmm. rye. Yes, Colin? Colin stands up and does the thing where he blows into the crook of his elbow to make a fart noise. <sighs> these kids these days. The whole class erupts in laughter. Mm -hmm. Alright, alright everybody. Very funny, Colin. Please sit down. Now, holding Caulfield is an unreliable narrator in the sense that... 
the bell for the end of the period rings, all of the students immediately get up and make a break for the door. What? Remember to do the reading and answer the response questions on page 194 in your textbooks. Nobody's listening. Mm. Or not, I guess. Alright, it's been about 20 minutes. I like Hugo a lot. I think I, I like Hugo more than the barista dude. But I also really like the, the guy with the corgi. He's cool. But we went to the gym. We got swole. Got to meet up with our old friend. And now we're talking to this lovely... Lovely gentleman, Hugo, Mr. Vega. So, I will see you guys next part. Um, if you like this video, like. If you want to see more from me, subscribe. And hopefully everything is well with you guys. Keep safe, you know, do what you gotta do. And I'll see you later. Bye!